Hello and welcome back to part two of this script case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I'm your host today. In part two, we are going to continue from where we had left off and that is with, with the creation of this pizza application, which you're seeing here. So within this, we have here the QR code menu, which we can then view items for sale within our restaurant business and manage that then within the backend application which we are then putting together now okay so within script case we had so far created our folder structure we had defined some elements to be applied to all applications as well as some defaults so we will continue from where we had left off and mentioning that the defaults let's go ahead and come back here to our project first of all come back here to default values and what we're going to do is then apply the headers or the header which we had recently just created to all applications so that we don't have to keep changing that as we then go along. So if I come here to default values, I selected here grid and then have here then the templates. And then here I can then select the header I want to apply it. And if you'd seen part one, you'd seen that we just created these free te HTML templates to be applied within our application. So I'm going to select then the main header for each of the grid applications and then also apply the same here for the form. So once that loads up, it's a lot of data that's getting there. And then from here, you can scroll down and again, select the main header. So that will now be applied to all grid and form applications that we create by default. Now, some of those we want, we want to create them, uh, change them. So we'll deal with that when, when the, um, when it, when it arises. Okay. So now that the default, um, values have been updated and now our header will also be applied to all our new applications. We're going to start off by creating our menu management applications for the admin. So here we have an admin menu, which are the folder structure we just created. And we're going to go then new application. And here I'll select a grid and I'm going to paste in here an SQL statement that I have prepared. Okay. And basically if I expand, if I expand this, basically what we're doing is we're grabbing here the ID subcategory, the subcategory also from the subcategories table. And then here the category ID category, as well as the link for our application from the category table and then here we have then the id menu header description price outstanding image and active status from the restaurant um, menu table and then we also have down here some more subcategories which is then the subcategory again being applied here i guess that may be a mistake as well as then here the categories so I'm going to leave that as it is. It's, it's working where I have it. So I'm just going to leave that as it is, but I think it's actually a mistake. It doesn't look um, off the top. Very good. Okay. So I'm going to carry on though. So if I type in here, grid, first of all, I need to apply this our name, restaurant, and I have the name saved already. So restaurant menu, and then I can go ahead and create that. Okay. So then with the application created, I'm going to first, first of all, come here to edit fields and adjust how we want to have all the fields here displayed. So the very first field here I want is first of all, the outstanding image. So I want the image here displayed first. Um, the ID I'm not going to need. Subcategory can come here to the bottom. The ID menu is not needed. The category link is not needed. And here, for instance, the ID category is not needed. Okay, so then here I want to apply the header, which is then the title of our application, I mean our product, then the description, the price, and then I also want to view the active status. So actually, let's just hide these category fields. Okay, so then we have our, was it three, five fields there? So if I'll just save that, first of all. And then here for outstanding image, this isn't text, this is an image and file name. Okay. And then we have here currency integer, and then we actually want to have our subcategory there as well. So let's add that there. So let's adjust the titles and save that. Okay. So here in the grid modules, let's jump in, disable search, detail, summary, and chart. 
and then we just have our grid here we have our default width defined and then if I come here to settings we can then set here the vertical alignment to top straight away and then run our application okay so notice that the header has no data okay because we have our default header applied our images here are not red yet and our fields are pretty much in in active or in status but we probably want to make some changes here so the active status looks much better okay so the first thing we can do then is we could come here to let's go here to events well we can leave events now we can add that later if we want to let's change first of all here the image for the image that we have here the outstanding image i think that's the most important thing first of all as well as the header so for the outstanding image if i come here then to the image height i want to apply here a 180 and a width also of 180. okay so this will then set the height and the width of our of our image in pixels and we want to maintain the aspect ratio and if I come down here, we have then the subdirectory sub for local storage. Now in here, I want to type in exactly this here. So forward slash restaurant and then underscore. And then what I'm doing here is applying the field subcategories, the ID subcategories. Okay. And then a forward slash. So then straight away when it creates a folder or when we actually upload within the form, it will gently will create this folder restaurant underscore apply then the subcategory ID to the folder also. Okay, so we'll do that shortly. So for now, if I save that and then run again, we then should then have our images then displayed there. We don't have because of course we're making this now here locally, um, where I have this here displayed is actually on a remote server. So we're not actually seeing that. So that's on another machine I have running here. So, okay, so we will have to update up well, update those images, which we we'll do then shortly within the uh, application. Okay, so what else do we have here? We have our header, so let's go ahead and do that. So here in layout, header and footer. Again, apply the image, which is then located in project and general images. So I'll apply that, and then here the title, and this is then the restaurant menu so you can just call it menu items and then run that and then we have our logo applied there as well as then the title so, um okay so then we can actually go ahead and then and create the form for this so if I again go new application and this time we're going to create the form and select then the table and then we have here then the restaurant menu table. So I'll select that and then I'll run it straight away. So run the application once it's been created. And then yes, if I want to display this message, not really. So I'll save that and then go create. Okay, so then our application is now being generated. And then we should be able to see then the form running and we can then start to make the changes that we want to our application here okay so then we have here our form so our header is already applied there we can see that at the settings set first of all the vertical alignment at the top uh, we want to apply then the logo and everything to our header so that's all done so let's apply those quickly image apply our logo our title and I'm just going to leave the default title for now. And then we already have some differences within our application. Okay, so we want to change these fields. So first of all here, description, we can see we have some HTML code there. So we're going to use a HTML editor. So if I come here to edit fields again, and then here I'll try well, I'll hide the ID menu. And what we want to do then is create some blocks here. And if I then look at this, we want to create two, well, one block in here. So I come here first of all to blocks. Or instead of blocks, let's use a page. So I come here to pages, and I'm going to call this page image um, in fact, this one is menu, and this one is then images.
Get my typings right. Okay, up image and include that one. Yes, please. Okay, so now we can have two pages within our application. If I come back here to edit fields, we can now see that we have here another page available. So what I need to then first of all do is create a new block, which can then be displayed within that. So I'll call it block one. And here, item images and create that. Form with errors, create. Doesn't like my name no more. Create. Okay, yeah, I already have a, yeah, it created it already. See, okay, so I have to delete this one. Okay, so now we have a new block. And if I come back here to edit fields again, I can then move here, for instance, the images into this one here. So outstanding images. And I think what we want to do then is also add a new field. So if I come here to fields, go new field. And I will go next. And I'll call this image add. Okay. And then here, multi images. Okay, we don't need a new block now because we just created it. Go create. I want to change that from text to image uh, file name. And then we want to apply then here the fields. So again here, if I can scroll down, the subdirectory for local storage. Again here, I want to apply again the restaurant underscore TB menu. And notice the curly brackets there. So I scroll in there, we can actually see that a little better the curly brackets and then that will then generate the ID for our um, folder. Okay so then if I go ahead and run that we can then see what that looks like first of all. We still need to apply here the outstanding images also. So yeah, I can jump in there quickly. I try to jump in there. So I come here to outstanding images. I really see I have an, an error there. So image file name and we want to then first of all here subdirectory restaurant okay and we'll, to make sure we select here the create subfolder so i didn't do that just now on the image add so let me come back here to image add and uh, clickable upload area i like that too so let's enable that and here create subfolder okay so that's important that we enable this one and save that all right, so increment file is also enabled, so it will automatically update the files. And then we can also change here the image height and width, which we had previously set at 180. So let's go ahead and adjust that also. And then select the outstanding image. And we can apply that here also. Okay. And make sure we have those options selected. Okay, so if I go ahead and run that, we'll have our fields ready. And we have an un, un, call to undefined function. Um, okay, so I was actually trying to set the, the ID here for the grid. So if you remember here on the grid application, if I come here to the outstanding image, we're using here the full indication here for the ID, which is what we actually have here. If I view here the SQL, we can see that then here the reference is as so. And for the restaurant menu form, we're connecting directly to the individual table and not joining multiple tables to receive the data. So I need to update here to subcategory ID only. And I've already done that here in the other field here also, as we can see here. And now then when I run that, the form then loads correctly. Okay, so that's a typical error then you would receive if you then enter an incorrect uh, value. If I come into images, I can then view the images that we have here. Okay. So now if I go ahead then and what I can do then is I can quickly add each of these images so that they are there. And if I do then first of all, here the first one, which is Coke. So let me find here the Coke image. Um, here I have the Coke image. So I drag and drop that. That will then be applied there. And I'm just going to add the Coke in here also and say add the pizza in there because it's also good. 
Now this here needs to have the multi upload option, which is missing. So let's view here first of all the form and then we come here to image add. And then here on the image add, we still need to apply here the multi upload features. So that's something we, I missed there just now. So thankfully I just noticed that testing at the form. So if I come here to multi upload, on our image add field and scroll down and here then I need to select the table which is then menu images so here we have menu images and then we have here the ID menu images we need to auto increment that one and then for the name file that is then the upload and then the subcategory menu ID is then a foreign key and then we need to apply then the subcategory ID Okay, so now if I then save that, that form will then start to work. So we'll check that out in a moment. But the first thing, so because it's uploaded, you may want to apply here the extension limitations. So I'm going to add here um, limits to the images that can be uploaded. So I'm going to say here 3 megs or 3 megabytes maximum for a JPEG. Uh, and then we need a J JPEG. So again, 3 megabytes add that extension so that will then limit the upload possibilities of applications okay so I'll add those again 3 meg and then here the png let's limit that also to 3 meg okay so I'll save that and then we want to apply those same settings here to the outstanding image so that we also limit the images here add the extension thankfully the browser remembers the MP, 3 megabytes and then I'll just add PNG and that also of course you may want to add more extensions and then we can save that okay so I'll run that again and now for the form I'm going to drag and drop the coke images there again so I come here again to images and then to coke and drag upload those and then this is uploading so I need to select here the start to upload and then uploads the images I can also save that and then now our images are displayed so number two was then the salami pizza so let me find now the salami pizza which was this one and I'm going to add those in there as well and let me just place that oh it's an invalid file okay so then I have now multiple uploads Okay, save that also. And now I have then two images for the pizza item. And then I can carry on. And it's meant to be special pizza, by the way. And then I can just carry on and keep adding more items to this as many as I want. Start upload and save that again. Now I'm just going to quickly add all of those and return in a moment. Okay, so now that I've added all the menu items, now we can see here that we have salami and all the menu items in here. So that when we come to building the actual menu, we can then see what's going on there. So we're starting to finish off on this form here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we have here, first of all, the description. And the, well, we want to change here how some of these fields are displayed. So maybe have the category and subcategory up the top here. We change here the titles, first of all. Okay, and we're going to change the header to title. Okay, and then for the category, let's first of all make here our selection. Um, okay, so we need to change this to a select field first of all. Select, and then here we have our automatic lookup. So for category, and choose the connection and then also you can select to use the title and then for the subcategory what we can do then is we can change this also first of all to a select field and here if I go then create select and menu subcategories and subcategory again apply our defaults here and then I want to actually adjust this here so where ID category ID category equals and then in curly brackets 
category underscore ID. Okay, so if I save that, okay, and if I return back here to category ID, and scroll down, I can enable here then the Ajax to update the subcategory. And I want to change here the active status also. So let's choose here a checkbox. And we will use a switch and change here the lookup values to manual and say active and then one and insert that. And then if I go ahead and run that, we will then have also our form pretty much done that. I want to move the active status up to the top and I want to also enable here the inputs 100% width. So this is the first thing I'm going to do. And I said then also we want to move the active status to the top. So move that up here and then run that again. And now we will have a near complete form as I still need to add there the description as a HTML editor. So let's do that quickly. Description, change here to HTML editor and run that again. And there we then have our form. Okay, so this is then going to be, it should be loaded already with the HTML editor. Okay, running now. We have then our description, price, title, subcategory, and our drink. So I'll go here to add new. I have then the category, there's no subcategory yet. So I'll select here drinks. I then have the subcategories. And then I can apply a title. Okay, and then we also have our price. Okay, and of course we are reloaded up here, which we wouldn't need on this form. So you may want to hide that or remove that from this form. And of course our images. Now here for the outstanding images, I may want to change this actually here. So if I come here to blocks and for those fields, I'm going to move here the label to above. And then we don't really have to display that. So if I actually change, well, go ahead and run it again. <coughs> And we'll get to see the change that's been applied there now. So here we see that the label is then displayed on the left here. I've actually just gone ahead and removed the label and also set it to above so that everything shifts over to the left hand side. So now we kind of know that this is just for images and for multiple images. So then we can just upload them there without having to have then the titles and it's a little cleaner and easier to use. Okay. So. Let's have a look now. We have our, our restaurant menu here and our form. So we can now link the two together. So if I come here up within the grid restaurant and choose application links. And if I come here then to create a new link and we will choose the edit link and go next. And there I'll choose then the form TV restaurant menu as the application we want to link to. Again, go next. And then here, we can then choose the fields and the subcategory, which is then required for this application. So I'll come up here and we have then our fields. The main field then would then be subcategory ID, ID. And then if I confirm that, and we can then choose how we want to have this application open in the same window, in a modal window or however. Now I've been opening all applications within modal windows. So I'm going to go ahead and choose modal window and then just leave the default values as they are. You can of course make changes to that so that the form opens up at um, a better uh, better height, a better width. So if I come here now for instance, go add new, it opens up here in the form. Now we see here straight away, we may want to change here the form and display here also the labels above. So let me quickly do that. And then I'll come here then to, again, to blocks and move them to above. And then if I generate that, and then we can see what it then looks like. So if I come back here, I refresh our grid application. Now if I go add new, we have that now a little cleaner. Okay. And we have our images there also, and we're ready to go with our application. Okay. So from there, we can then go ahead and add one more application, which is then what we're needing next for the menus which is then the categories. So if I come here and create a new application again. And here again, I'll create a form. And here what I'm going to do is then select the menu category. 
and I'll choose here editable grid view and go create. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and run that. We have then our basic application, and of course, we want to apply then straight away our header there. So if I come back here to layout, header, and footer, apply those items straight away. Have then our image with the logo, as well as in our title, and our settings for the form. We want to have vertical alignment top, and for the form orientation, we can leave them as they are. Uh, but then what we might, might want to do here is for settings, enable here the use modal form to edit. Okay, so that then clicking this edit button will open a modal form like it is with our other applications. So I go here, edit. We have then the modal form straight away there to change our data. So that it, there is some consistency among the applications. If I go add new, it then just opens up the option to add a new application directly there. Okay, so that is then our final application at the moment. We have then our cat menu category ready, which is there where we store then the URLs for each of the menu items. So we need to go ahead and start creating the menu items. So I come here to menu, and what I'm going to do then is create, first of all, the main menu item. So I come here to new application. and choose grid and I'm going to paste in here a custom SQL statement which is then joining the menu images, the restaurant menu and the menu category as well as subcategory tables and they're basically joining those and we're going to call this one grid main menu and then I can just go ahead and go create. Okay, so then within this application, if I just go ahead and what I'm going to do is here, first of all, I'm going to hide a load of these fields. So I come here to edit fields. And the only item I want displayed here is the outstanding image. So I'm going to hide the rest of these here. And if I go ahead and run that again, we're going to see what we have. Okay, so we have then our image and we have here the details. So we want to remove that and we have our header and everything here. So this is really important here. So we need to make some changes to our theming. And so first of all, what we want to do is come here to the layout, the header and footer. And now here, what we want to do is change the, um, well, the header that we have. So first of all, settings. And remember, we created three headers. So we have the main header. The menu header, which is what I'm going to apply here, return back to header and footer. And here then again, I'll apply the logo. This time I will choose the larger logo. And then we have then also the title, which here I'll call it main menu. Okay, if I go ahead and run that again. Okay, and then we start to have the shape of our menu here. So I'm going to go ahead and first of all change the field here. So I come here to the field and here I want to change this to an image and file name. And then here we want to apply then the restaurant and some categories. Double check that's here. Make sure we get the right one in there. So I paste that in there. And that's the full one. Okay. And then if I go ahead and run that again, we will then start to have all the images then displayed within our application. Okay, so to make sure that they're all the same size, we can then come here to image height. So I say here 450, and then image width, say 850. They will then also always be that size within our application. Okay, so we then want to change, first of all, within edit fields. We can move this into center and at the center the text alignment also for the grid modules we want to remove the search detail summary and chart okay and then we can set the table width to 100 percent for this application and then if i go ahead and run again i oh, still need to set top as well 
Okay, so we'll come into settings and vertical alignment top and run that. Okay, so we're nearly there. And then we have here our toolbar. And I'm just going to remove everything from here. We don't need anything displayed there. And run that again. Okay, so there we start to have uh, the shape of our application. We may want to make some changes to the image sizing. Of course, I've defined something there that may not be ideal for some of these images and more ideal for others. Or of course, we would need to actually create our images the way we want to have them. Okay, so one thing we want to do then is first of all, check, create a new template for this. So if I come here to layout, and then we have here application themes. And then what I want to do is then I want to customize this template. So I'm going to save the template. So here I have the template I'm currently using. I'm going to select here save as, and I'm going to select chain, uh, indicate the restaurant and choose the mode as pub, uh, project so that it's linked with this project. Okay, and then what I can do then within this application is actually select that and we can make uh, various changes to how the menu will then be displayed for our end users. Okay, so it's about finished. And then what we can do then is we can actually edit this. Now, we have two types of editors here. Okay, so I would first of all suggest to actually save this. Okay, so I'll save that. And then close the app and close the theme. It does take a few moments longer, but it's, it's definitely worthwhile. Okay, so if I come here and now edit this, I will now e enter the, the standard editor. So this will now update all uh, the theme options. Otherwise, when we come to the advanced editor, we need to change for the form, for the grid, uh, for each individual types of applications, and, 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 and of course it goes on. So the best way to do that is actually define your initial items that you want here. So for instance, if I want to change the menu icon scheme, or if I want to uh, apply different buttons throughout the application. So here, for instance, I could say uh, dark blue or whatever else. I can apply then the font that I want to have displayed here, change the font size and so forth, uh, display corners or hide corners. And then from here, I can basically make all those changes. So basically here, I'm just going to go ahead and remove here the um, border colors and some border styling from each of, well, from the header and then from blocks. So I'll say none and get rid of these border indications here and also get rid of there the black background color. I'll do the same also here for table, I have none, okay. And then we have here our grid, even lines. So here I will also go no border and no border color and no background color. And again, also for the grid line odd, I will remove here all of the styling for that. So if I then scroll up and go save, so that's then the quickest way to apply uh, global styling to your new template. Okay, so then if I save that, and then what we can do is then jump into again the advanced styling. Okay, so then if I select here the advanced mode, and this time I can edit then the options for the applications that I want to have uh, changed. And then we can apply this theme to individual applications. So we will be using this specific theme for all of the menu items displayed with the QR code and the restaurant menu items that we have then displayed. So then here I have then the grid folder. And then here, for instance, I can choose here the grid blocks. I can see here then the styling of that. So I have here the background and border, border and also the background which I already cleared from the other application from the standard edit. Okay. So I wanted to make further changes. I can make them, make them here. And also for instance here for the form, we have then the page, the buttons, individual buttons for each application and so forth can then all be adjusted here. So now I'm going to go ahead and just save that. And then we have our theme ready to be applied to our main menu. So if I come back here then to our main menu application. So I'll close that first of all and close our main menu and then reopen it again so that the 
our options are refreshed. If I come here to the layout and settings, I can now choose here from theme, project, restaurant, and I'll update also the search theme, save that. And now if I go ahead and run the application again, we'll see that we have a slight change. Of course, I want to actually remove these hovers and so forth. And then we can actually remove that within the theme, which is then applied. Okay, so now I've shown you how to do that. I'm going to carry on. And of course, it's not 100% perfect as I have it within the demonstration, but that is what you'll be downloading. It will just take some more time to actually um, go ahead and make some further adjustments. So we'll see how we are on time as we continue on. So we still have a few more menu applications to create. So I have here, first of all, if I create now, first of all, a new grid. And then what I want to do then is, for instance, I'm going to paste that in there. I'm this time doing the same selection as the menu, but now only choosing the category ID 8. Okay, so if I then call this one here, uh, grid menu drinks, and then go create. Okay, so let's go okay, so then create our application. Actually, we skip that section so we can actually jump on and there we have our next one and if I go new application again we choose another grid enter our MySQL this time I'm choosing ID 7 so this is then grid menu pasta and create Okay, and we create some new application again. Quite grid again. Now, of course, we could actually just create one and go ahead and modify all of the settings, uh, which is obviously the faster way of doing this because I'm using, just changing the ID on each one of these. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut this video short now and carry on. Now, when you come back, we'll actually see that all of these applications are ready to go. Um, and basically what I've done really then is if we come back here to the main menu again and come into the SQL, I'll basically just add a where here. So for instance here, I could then add where, um, let's have that in here, where uh, TV underscore restaurant underscore menu dot category uh, underscore ID equals then so number five okay and that's what then we'll be applying then to each of the applications um replicating basically this individual grid okay okay so as i said i'm going to jump and skip through this and let me go ahead and just delete these two applications again don't really need those so we're just going to copy this one. So the easiest way is literally just copy this one. And we call it grid menu and pizza. There we go. And then here in the MySQL, we just make that slight adjustment. And then we'll have our pizza menu ready to go. Okay, so we have two applications, two other applications here to create before I finish up. Otherwise, we're going to be very short time. So I'm going to jump in here to the admin subcategory. And then when we come back afterwards, we'll have here the grid menu pizzas ready. So I have here, first of all, the subcategories menu and form to create. So if I come here to grid, we can then open up the grid application. And then we can create a new grid again with a custom MySQL. And here we're just joining the subcategory table as well as the category table together and displaying all of their information. So I'm going to call the grid underscore TB underscore subcategories. I have it there already. Menus. Okay. And click create. 
Okay, and then here we can quickly adjust the fields. And here we, uh, we just want to have the subcategory displayed. So we're going to see that we have all the fields here displayed. And that's really not needed. So if I come here to edit fields. And here I just want the subcategory. Everything else here can be hidden. And save that. And then if I go ahead and run that again, we have then our basic fields. Okay, so what I want to do then, that, then for this application is then go ahead and group this. So if we then come here to group by, static group by, and define a new group. And we're going to define that by a category. Oh, here, we can choose here the category. Yeah, we choose category and then subcategory. And there we have that grouped by the two of them. So I go ahead and run that again. We have then category and subcategory. And then we have the items that we have within that subcategory. Okay. Okay, so we still have to apply here the header, the header and footer quickly. So let me really quickly do that to so image. And there we have here our project image, our logo, as well as the title here. And so menu items. Okay. Okay, so then we have uh, a form to create for that really quickly. So I'll come here then to new, create our form, and select the table uh, menu subcategories and create and then we need to link here our grid with our form because i should untick the generate source code so we can speed it up a little bit so back to the subcategories menu application links and now we're going to link here the subcategories form which we just created so i'll cre create new link edit link next and then here choose the menu subcategories Go next and the fills ID subcategory, ID subcategory, confirm that. And then again, I will use a modal window for the updates. Save that. Now, do note you can change the settings there. So, if I view here properties again, we can change here the width and the height of our modal window that is being displayed, as well as define whether it should be closed after update or after insert, as well as display the insert update or delete buttons or navigation for the application which we will be displaying so i can save that if i go ahead and run that we have here our uh, sub subcategory form and we now have here our edit fields where we can go ahead and update those subcategories okay so really quickly here for the subcategory form so that it's actually complete i will hide here the id category uh, subcategory add here the category and then here for the fields, save that. We should select, use it, select here, use a select. And then here we can then straight away change the country. So create here an auto lookup countries, country displayed, choose the connection, use a title, and then we can run that again. And then I believe the only things we have to do there is the positioning of our form as well as the grid there and here the header okay so let's quickly do that so we have here layout header and footer apply the sorry image first save that and then also the title and then we also had the positioning of the vertical layout so here we have vertical layout top 100 percent width on our form fields also so if I run that really quickly, now our form looks like so. Okay. And then our menu, if I then change here also, the settings here for the vertical alignment also need to be changed to top. We can run that quickly and make sure we are complete there also. And I believe there we go. Okay. Okay, so excellent. So we can then continue back on. Um, so when we come back in part three, I will already have the rest of the menu items here created for you and ready to go. And basically just replicating how we created that initial initial form, so, well, the initial grid. So if I come back here to menu, uh, sorry, menu for users. So the group menu, we have here the grid main menu. 
And yes, I'm just now going to replicate that four or five times for each of our categories. And we'll be back shortly in part three of this script case training. So I hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching.